Oh, here's a good one. The second super chat is Tim is controlled opposition saying if Biden turns on Israel, he's got my vote. What a perfect example of what I was to describe as Israel derangement syndrome. Let me elaborate. An individual who calls me controlled opposition, who is willing to vote for Joe Biden so long as he turns on Israel. A man who is enforcing DEI policies at the federal level. A man who just invoked new Title IX rules that eliminate protections for women and allow males to compete against females, among other things, providing protections for women who make claims and accusations against men. A guy whose brother gained a bunch of lucrative contracts seemingly in line with uh, the, the position he was he had as the vice president. A man whose son was an executive on the board who did drugs and who was cutting out 10% for the big guy. You'd be willing to support one of the most corrupt individuals in U.S. history who is pushing communist garbage in this country so long as he says Israel bad. Yeah! That, my friends, is exactly Israel derangement syndrome. Shall we read on? No, I've got problems with MAGA. It's the elephant in the room, Israel. You are an effing embarrassment to this country if you put Israel's beliefs over Israel's no, interests. Man. I don't care who got killed. I don't care who got raped. The interests over there don't, don't trump here. Or else you're in the gulag. My family is here. That's my Maybe priority. Man. People are getting killed and raped in countries all over this planet. But for some reason, Israel's the one that I'm supposed to shed a tear over no 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 that ain't how it works that my friends is exactly israel derangement syndrome and all across our land you've seen jewish americans harassed and attacked and terrorized by anti-semites and hamas sympathizers i can't believe what we've been witnessing over the last year actually i've watched it in great detail i've watched it and i've watched it take place it's hard to believe yet despite Presiding over this explosion of anti-Semitism, Kamala Harris has done absolutely nothing. She has not lifted a single finger to protect you or to protect your children or to even protect you with words. I'm here today to tell the Jewish American community that this ugly tide of anti-Semitic pro-Hamas bigotry and hate will be turned back and crushed starting at noon on January 20th, 2025. Thank you. That, my friends, is exactly Israel derangement syndrome. So uh, it, it's it's one hundred percent related to Hezbollah. No, it you isn't. Pretend Hezbollah, like Hezbollah this Iranian is doing it out of nothing to do with Can Palestinians. I answer? Hezbollah has Can nothing to do with Palestinians. They are they are Lebanese. That's they are Shia that's Lebanese. They have nothing to do with Palestinians. They have you nothing to do with Palestinians. There's not a single Palestinian in Hezbollah. So to, for you to tie it to Hamas is ridiculous. No, it is whitewashing. It's the old tired ridiculous. propaganda against you, Israel. You have you, to be okay, honest me, and address the situation. Hezbollah has okay, nothing Hezbollah to do with Palestinians. Hezbollah is doing it because of the occupation. Are you so nothing stupid to do you don't with understand it. that? It's none of Hezbollah's business. Nothing to do with Hezbollah. Oh, who, yeah, who appointed all the Muslims. Them? Watch us. Who appointed, all, Hezbollah, who appointed Hezbollah other than the, their Iranian masters to have so, anything to say so, about Israel and Palestine? Palestinians. What have Lebanese so militias got to do with it? You don't want peace. I know. Of you want to we occupy do. But and what steal their land as what long does as you believe possible. Have to do with I got it. Metalopoly, a longtime friend of the show and always respectful in their disagreements, recently shared some thoughts on the Israel-Lebanon situation. They said, it's sad that civilians got caught up in this, but are we really supposed to feel bad over literal terrorists getting hurt? Seriously. By the way, Lebanon was a majority Christian country. Why do you think it isn't one now? They took pity on Islamic refugees, and how were they thanked for this kindness? Well, it's an Islamic theocracy and a launch pad for terrorist attacks now, so take a guess. First off, I appreciate Meta challenging the conversation, but let's break it down. On the point about terrorists getting hurt, no one's saying we need to mourn for Hezbollah. That's not the focus. What we're really talking about here is the indiscriminate killing of civilians, especially women and children. When Israel blows up neighborhoods in the name of defense, the issue isn't whether terrorists are hurt, it's that innocent people are getting caught in the crossfire. When both sides kill civilians, 
it's not defense anymore. It's just violence. The U.S. isn't allowed to do a drone strike if there's risk of a civilian casualty, but Israel is allowed to blow up thousands of random pagers indiscriminately? Got it. Meta also brought up Lebanon's past as a majority Christian country and implied it changed because they took in Islamic refugees. Lebanon's history is complicated, but to say its current situation is just because of refugees is missing the point entirely. Lebanon's issues stem from decades of foreign intervention, including Israeli bombings and military actions. Shifting blame to refugees distracts from what's happening now. Israel's role in killing civilians today and the idea that Lebanon is now an Islamic theocracy and a launch pad for terrorism? That's a stretch. Lebanon isn't an, an Islamic theocracy. It's a politically fractured country with a delicate balance of Christians, Sunni Muslims, and Shia Muslims. Hezbollah operates there, sure, but ignoring how Israel's own actions destabilize the region misses the bigger picture. If we're calling out launch pads for terror, how about the US, which funds wars and destabilizes countries across the Middle East? Now, let's get this straight. When we throw around the word terrorist, why does it only apply to Hezbollah, Hamas, or anyone else Israel targets? Why doesn't it apply to our own American government or to Israel itself? They kill civilians, women, and children just the same. The minute you mention America's involvement as Israel's accomplice in murder, suddenly the conversation gets shut down. Donald Trump is decrying the fact that the Israeli lobby doesn't have more power over the American people. Most powerful lobby in, in this country by far was Israel and Jewish people. Today, it's almost like what happened? What happened? What happened to Schumer? What happened to all these people? Schumer's like a, a Palestinian, right? It's a Palestinian. It's amazing. If you go back 15 years or even less, the strongest lobby in that sense in the United States was Israel. You couldn't say a thing about Israel, Christian or Jew. You couldn't say anything about today. It's like under siege. And then you see Schumer, who's become a Palestinian, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, he's actually become like a Hamas agent. You know, 15 years ago, Israel was the strongest lobby, if you want to use the word lobby, had the strongest representation of people like this. But the strongest there was, if you said something about a Jewish person or something about Israel that was bad, you were out of politics. You said something about Israel that was bad, it was like, today, you have to fight. We all have to fight for Israel. It's whatever happened to America first, the MAGA movement is filled with pathetic Christian Zionists who care more about fighting for Israel than they do for Americans. MAGA, for example, has no problem with Israel providing health care for their people. But if you imply we should do the same thing in America, they will call you a filthy communist. MAGA claims they support free speech Meanwhile, they support canceling Americans who are too critical of the foreign policy of the genocidal state of Israel. Another election where our choice is essentially Zionists who like gay people and Zionists who don't like gay people. What a democracy that we live in. Over and over again, Trump and his group of MAGA traitors made it clear what their intentions are if Donald Trump ever wins the presidency again. We're going to take back our country and we're going to make Israel great again. If there's one thing America's great at, it's bringing peace to the Middle East by killing millions of people. Just look at Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Vietnam, and the post 9-11 wars. Turns out the secret to fighting terror is being better at it than anyone else. And why are my tax dollars funding this mess? It's like a gang war. Why am I, as an American taxpayer, funding one gang's turf war against the other? Neither side is innocent. Both target civilians and call it defense. People say, terrorism, they killed you with a knife. Killed one person with a knife, shot you, that's terrorism. But if you fly a $64 million F-16 and you drop up an A-84 bomb, 
that cost sixteen thousand dollars? That's not terrorism because it's remote. You're behind the screen. So what happened? What Israel is doing? It is removing itself, like America to drones. And then when you push someone to be in, to, they always brag about bombing them to the Stone Ages. What happens when the screens and the, all of the obstacles that you have been put between you and those people that you have treated them this way, when this is a breach and you come face to face, you will come face to face with what you have created. Middle Mac. Imagine if a gang on the south side of Chicago sprays bullets in a drive-by and two little kids end up dead. Does anyone argue the gang was justified? Of course not. Everyone calls it what it is, unjustifiable violence. Where leaders are just sitting there and kind of swiping left and like right. Invade, yeah. destroy. <laughs> it's boring. Like a uh, puppet government. <laughs> yeah, and then turn off the phone, go to sleep. The value of human life, it does seem that every culture has a unequal valuation of human life. Mm -hmm. So those two things combined create a complicated um, military landscape of the world. Yes, and you have like something like the gospel that like people have actually said that like the gospel can actually create a target list using AI and give you a green, yellow, or a red to go, oh, go ahead. And now AI is not just disrupting the market, it's disrupting our humanity. And it is, we became so comfortable killing people from afar, killing people with a push of the button. And now it is, it is like, <laughs> it's like dating apps, you know, when you, when you swipe left and right, and it's like, oh, right, it's, it's, it becomes so like cheap. It's not like meeting someone. It's like, oh, la, la, la. it's like a lot of fish in the sea. Same with AI, boom, 500 people killed, boom, they killed, so easy. So easy. It's so easy, and then it's so far removed from you. So when you put these people in this condition, you have literally put them in a different universe than yours. You are behind in your air-conditioned screens, like pushing them, blowing up a, uni a, a university. It's amazing. But then you meet the, the what you have done. That you meet the Frankenstein that you have created, and then people are like, "Oh, look what they did." You just gave me this image of a uh, a dating app from hell. <laughs> Where leaders are just sitting there and kind of swiping left, so like, right, invade, yeah. destroy. <laughs> it's boring, like a uh, puppet government. <laughs> yeah, and then turn off the phone, go to sleep. Yeah. Middle mega. But when Israel's bombs kill kids, suddenly it's complicated. No one gets a free pass for that. Take a look at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Over two hundred thousand people killed in the blink of an eye, or the wars post 9/11. Over four and a half million people dead. That's not terrorism. What's worse than state-sanctioned mass murder? We need to stop pretending that terrorism is a label we hand out to everyone but our own government and allies. If your country is blowing up civilians, killing children, and causing chaos, guess what? You're part of the problem and you don't get a free pass just because you're a US ally. Meet the ultimate freeloader. And no, it's not your lazy neighbor or that cousin who's always asking for a loan. I'm talking about Israel, our so-called ally who's draining Uncle Sam's bank account faster than you can say foreign aid. Since 1946, we've handed over $263.6 billion directly to Israel, no questions asked. And what do they do with it? Fund their wars, cover their citizens' health care, pay for college tuition, and provide housing, all while we're left to scrape by on what's left. But it doesn't stop there. We spent $151.9 billion in Egypt to secure Israel's southern flank. Another $147.6 billion in Afghanistan to keep the region stable and extremism at bay, which, surprise, surprise, benefits Israel. $91.5 billion went to Iraq to counter Iran's influence because heaven forbid anyone challenges Israel's supremacy in the region. $74.8 billion to Turkey to keep them from cozying up to Iran. $71.5 billion to Pakistan to keep them from turning anti-Israel. And $44.6 billion to Jordan to secure Israel from the east. Let's not forget the wars we fought and paid for. The Afghanistan war. A cool $2.3 trillion. The Iraq war, $1.9 trillion more. The Gulf War, $61 billion. 
Syria operations, $54 billion, all of this, and millions of civilians and military personnel dead. But hey, that's just the price of friendship, right? After all, who wouldn't want a friend like Israel who costs you trillions of dollars and countless lives? Of course, if you dare to ask why we're bankrolling all of this, well, congratulations, you're officially an anti-Semite. So here we are, the so-called greatest country in the world, playing sugar daddy to a nation that doesn't think twice about bleeding us dry. Meanwhile, our own veterans are homeless, our schools are crumbling, and our healthcare system is a joke. America first, not even close. We're too busy footing Israel's bill to take care of our own. While they're thriving off our generosity, our country is rotting from the inside out. It's time to put America first for real. And that starts with cutting off the cash flow to our so-called ally, who's more of a parasite than a partner. We're not just funding Israel's war machine. We're trapped in a system where criticism of Israel is forbidden. I'm sorry to not only the Jewish community, but to my family members. I'm sorry to not only the Jewish community, but to my family members. Jews think they got that much damn gravitas to where I need to be reprogrammed and sit down with one of they motherfucking rabbis. Fuck you and your rabbi. I'm sorry to not only the Jewish community, but to my family the members. Middle Mag. I gotta sit down and have this nigga I've never met program me bullshit. I don't know you. And then we sit down like kids listening to this motherfucking lox and bagel eating ass nigga tell us about his religion. And I'm supposed to just, oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. It's a boss, it's a boss. I'm sorry, boss. So I said something, boss. So I said, I didn't really say anything, but I got too close. Sorry, boss. Sorry, boss. You want to talk about white people? Jews want to talk about what white people can do? White people don't have your black ass sitting down begging. Y'all don't hear me? A mess with people would stop to hold. Fucking locks and bagel eating ass nigga. I don't know you, and I'm supposed to just, but you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. When's the last time a white person had your black ass somewhere begging and asking for forgiveness? When the last time your ass had to learn something about Christopher Columbus? Had to learn something about Queen Elizabeth? When the last time your black ass had to learn something about Andrew Jackson? When the last time your black ass had to be forced to sit down by some white man to listen about his ass and his damn Christianity and his damn Catholicism? When the last time a white man was able to punk your black ass like that? Cause you said something about them. Cause you called them an Animal, Cause you call them the devil. Cause you call them anything. You want to sit up there and have Jews tell you about how bad black people, white people are. But they the ones that got your ass crying and begging and shit. Who's your real master, black folks? Who your real master? I don't have uh, hate in my heart for the Jewish people um, or anyone that identifies as a Jew. I'm not anti-Jewish or any of that. Um, and it's been difficult. Um, to sit at home with my family, um, with them seeing all of this and having questions. And, um, you know, the part that, that hasn't been hard is explaining myself because I know who I am. And I know what I represent. Um, but I think the, the difficult aspect is just uh, processing all this, uh, and understanding the power of my voice, the influence I have. Um, I'm no one's idol, um, but I am a, a human being that wants to make impact and change. I'm sorry to not only the Jewish community, but to my family members and to my relatives uh, because they know I stand for something bigger and I'm grateful now I get to explain myself. Fast, what you say mm, That you only meant well But cause you did mm, what you say Middle mm, That it's all for the best Cause it is what you say mm, That it's just what we need You decided this What you say mm, What did she say And soon us came you got Jews telling you how bad whites are, but whites don't have as much power as Jews. Have you noticed they get mad when you make jokes about Jews being good with money? Why are they upset about being good with money? That makes no fucking sense. Until you look at the context of it, 
that a lot of countries, they were kicked out because of how they handled money. What is the greatest trick that the devil played on man that he didn't exist? He's not real. And the Jewish supremacy, they make sure they hide it in plain sight. Middle MAGA. Y'all don't hear me? You can call out Russia, China, even our own government. But Israel, that's where the line is drawn. We're supposed to value free speech, but criticizing Israel puts you in dangerous territory. You can lose your platform, your career, and even your life for calling out Israel's actions. And every time we send Israel another billion dollars, we might as well send along a handwritten note saying, feel free to kill whoever you want. We've got your back. The state of Israel is our greatest ally and friend. Well, Israel's our greatest ally in the Middle East. But Israel is our greatest ally in the Middle East. Israel is our greatest ally in the Middle East. I mean, Israel's our greatest ally on the planet. No, they're not our greatest ally. In fact, they're not an ally at all. I would consider them more of an enemy. The history tells us this, most of which is hidden. Where do we want to go with this? Where do we want to go with this? The peanut project for a new American century? Clean break memo. Go back to the ear gun. Go back to the original terrorists. The ear gun. Just, just one example. They invented modern day terrorism. Look into the Levant affair, where they dressed up as Egyptians and they had a plan to bomb American and British military installations and then blame it on Egypt. So that what? So that American could go and fight their war. They were planning on killing Americans. That's not like an ally to you. The USS Liberty. They were bombed and attacked for hours by air, by sea. For hours, they tried to sink the ship. All of these survivors say that Israel did that intentionally. Do we want to go to Jonathan Pollard? Spies on the US, steals our secrets, gives it to Israel, goes to prison, gets out of prison, flies to Israel. He was born in America, flies to Israel, given a red carpet fucking welcome, hero's welcome by Bibi Netanyahu on video for all the media to see, gave him a permanent salary. Does that sound like an ally to you? Spy devices planted in Washington, D.C. to spy on President Trump and you know, who knows how many other times they've done this. Do want to go to the destabilization of the Middle East? Do we want to go to the dozens of times where we told Israel specifically not to do something and they went ahead and did it anyway. And then when we said, whoa, why'd you do that? They said, oh, okay, I'm sorry, we'll stop doing this, but you have to give us aid. You have to give us more money. You have to give us more military equipment. But hey, they're an ally. Let's just set the record straight here. Israel undoubtedly acted more like an enemy than an ally. Because a lot of Americans are tricked. A lot of Americans are fooled into thinking that, you know, Israel's our ally. Well, Israel's more of a threat to America than Iran is, than Afghanistan is. Israel's more of a threat to America than Iraq is, than Libya is. You know, name your country that we have taken out for the benefit of Israel. If you take out Saddam, Saddam's regime, I guarantee you, that it will have enormous positive reverberations on the region. I think the choice of Iraq is a good choice. It's the right choice. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. That's what our foreign policy boils down to, complicity and murder. What's really alarming is the censorship. My channel could be demonetized or deleted for speaking the truth about Israel. YouTube and social media platforms have uh, ties to Israel through former Israeli intelligence agents or cozy relationships with governments. Challenge Israel's narrative, a and you're at risk. That's the real terror. Not just bombs and bullets, but control. The control they have over media speech and even your financial livelihood. Look around, how many voices have been silenced for daring to criticize Israel. I'm not picking sides in this conflict. I've never supported Hezbollah, and, and I don't back Israel either. They're both gangs fighting for power, and innocent people are caught in the middle. 
So why am I being dragged into this? My tax dollars, your tax dollars, they're funding one of these gangs. It's insane. I'm paying for Israel to bomb civilians, and I'm supposed to sit back and call it justice. No thanks. We're told that Israel is America's greatest ally, that we need to protect them at all costs. But when your greatest ally keeps dragging you into global conflicts and censoring your free speech, maybe it's time for some new friends. Speaking out against Israel has become dangerous. They see you as a threat, a terrorist, just for saying the truth. They're waging war on anyone who questions them, not just with bombs, but with censorship. If you have a big platform and you speak up, you get cut down. If you don't, you get silenced by censorship. That's how they operate, and that's how they keep control. So why are we even talking about Lebanon's past? I don't support either side. What I care about is why my country is pouring billions of dollars into one of these gangs while calling the other terrorists. Why am I footing the bill for violence that's destroying innocent lives? And why does criticizing this whole system put me at a risk of being silenced? America has its own house to clean before pointing fingers. We've killed millions. We've funded terror. And now we're propping up a regime that does the same. It's time to stop the double standards. It's time to stop funding this endless cycle of violence. It's time to stop pretending that Israel, Hezbollah, or the U.S. has any moral high ground. They're all part of the same problem. And it's time we called it what it is, terrorism, no matter who's behind it. I'm only here for the best ideas. If anyone can come up with a better take, one that makes sense of why we're still pouring billions into this madness, I'm listening. I'll adopt it, but right now, I don't see anyone making sense on this topic, unless someone out there can convince me otherwise. So drop your comments. I want to hear them. I think, I don't remember who tweeted. Someone tweeted something like, if you're an American patriot, it means you're pro-Israel or something like that. Yeah. Um, right. th this, this idea that like, it is your patriotic duty to have this particular feeling about another country, no matter right. what the other country is, I don't care what country it is. Um, so that, that goes too I far think, on that. So I, I do so, think that there uh, is something patriotic about supporting our allies because we form alliances because it's in our national interest to form alliances and having formed those alliances and, and patriotic Yeah, but you don't have a, you don't, you, you don't have a patriotic, you don't have a patriotic, you do I, not have a patriotic duty to, to support, support any church, country church that is not your own. But you know, in this case, we just should back Israel. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but hold on a second. Could hit that topic. I mean, look, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna end with saying this. We know who runs the central banks, we know who fucking controls the politics here in the United States, and it's a fucking problem, right? We need to figure out a way to take our country back from these premises. I fucking said it, right? Oh! That's what the fuck it is, right? We need to take our country back. Because these guys are the ones that make decisions and they're gonna go ahead and do things in the interest of another fucking foreign land that, quite frankly, doesn't fucking benefit us. That's the reality. <laughs> the time right? like America first, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> they go over there, they go, they go over there, bro.
how you this how you deal with these fucking Jews now. I'm gonna be honest. This is how you gotta deal with it. <laughs> when they sit there and they say, "Oh, you're an anti-Semite," you know what you say? Am I a fucking liar, faggot? Yeah, that's it. That's what, that's what you say. There's Am I no wrong? thing with these assholes. We have to go ahead and take power away from this term of anti-Semitism and tell them, look, you fucking pussy faggots, Jonathan Greenblatt, ADL, Media Matters, all you fucking watchdog, piece of shit fucking pussies that are against free speech, you un-American faggots. Am I lying? Is it? Because they never actually refute the facts. They never do. If I go and I say, look, there's Zionist fingerprints all over the JFK assassination. There's Zionist fingerprints all over the RFK assassination. There's Zionist fingerprints all over fucking 9-11. I show the fucking declassified documents. I show the 302s. I talk about the connections. Hey, this is at least questionable. They will sit there and call me an anti-Semite. So suck a fucking dick. Yep. Fuck you. How about this? Am I a liar? Okay? If you want to call me a fucking anti-Semite, fine. But am I a fucking liar, you piece of shit faggot? Fuck you. That's what really comes down to. That's me. good. That's okay. I'm exactly. tired of them. I, I'm tired of them throwing around the word anti-Semitism. I'm tired of them throwing around the word bigot. I'm tired of them throwing the word around fucking racist. Whatever the fuck shame language they want to use. Fuck you. my friends, is exactly Israel derangement syndrome. Shall we read on? Middle MAGA.